All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to today's episode of uh, the School of Poetry. I want to believe that you guys can hear me. All right, so welcome to today's School of Poetry and uh, it's going to be a wonderful and interesting edition today. Uh, today we'll be talking about something that bothers a lot of broiler farmers, which is, which is growth, growth, growth. So we are going to quickly address it now. Let me take down the music in the background. All right, so if you can hear me, please let me see your comments in the comment section. Uh, we are here to do it again. This is DIY Agric, your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner. So in case you're just joining on us for the first time, uh, this is one platform that you get to know everything about poultry and especially in this school of poultry session i get to tell you things that no one will tell you about poultry uh, uh, a lot of people will say okay this is why we do this or they will say do this but they won't tell you this is why you should do this so that is the answer you get to hear when you continue to watch um diy agri all right so in case you are yet to subscribe to the channel it's one thing you should do so that you don't get to miss out on any of our interesting tips all right so thank you all for joining you can hear loud and clear okay you can hear loud and clear god bless you all right so thank you all for joining again and we are not going to waste our time we are just going to go right into it and talk about exactly what i promised to give you guys okay <clears throat> so you know as in the banner that i shared you know there's a way that I get to make broilers just have incredible weight in a very short period of time. And that is what you all have come to know. And we are just going to address that right away without wasting our time. All right. So I have my notes here so that we don't waste time. Okay. All right. So interestingly, People talk about feed a lot. Yeah, a lot of people talk about feed and it's very important. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's not important. Feed um, accounts for about 70% and even more in some cases of your total cost of production. So how will somebody come and say feed is not important? However, I will tell you that feed is actually overrated. Yeah we we overrate feed we put so much importance on on feed and some people have even gone out there to put their money all of their life savings on the business trying to get the best out of it and after spending so much on feed they are still not getting the result so what are those things or what is that thing that you will do that you will get the result 100 percent of the time actually the things i'm going to tell you today if you try it and it doesn't work then nothing else will work in poultry that's an assurance that's to guarantee you that if you do these things you are going to get the results there's no doubt about it even if it's a baby that does it if it's an adult that does it if it's somebody who has 10 years experience that does it it doesn't matter you're going to get the results that you want so for a while let's just put feed aside and let's focus on some certain things that actually matter certain things that matter a lot in poultry farming so these are the things that will help you to actually be able to raise your broilers that will give you that remarkable weight in a very short amount of time say in six weeks you're able to get 3.5 kg and that is a wow so these are the things we are going to be considering this evening if you already feel like you are excited please let me see your like please like the video like the stream and um that will tell youtube that there's something going on here and a lot of farmers should also see this all right so thank you um feed is overrated and we are not going to be focusing on feed we know definitely that feed is good of course if your animals are not eating then they're just going to die so you don't want them to die however there are certain things that if you take them out even when you put in the best you buy the most expensive feed you are still not going to get the good result that you want 
Right? So let's focus on these things in a few moments. And for you to know that this is actually special, I prepared a slide for you. I'm going to show you those slides. And with the slide, you get to learn step by step how you can practice these things that I'm going to share with you, how you can make them part of your farm practice. And, you know, it just begins to yield the result automatically. By the time you are able to put these things in practice, the results are just going to come knocking at your door. All right. So no time to waste. I'm going to quickly <clears throat> share something with you right now. Just stay with me. All right. Excuse me. All right. So I think we should give some attention to these things. We should give some attention to water. Yeah, it sounds simple, but don't worry. I'm going to break it down for you very soon. I'm going to break it down in a way that you will like, wow. So this is, this is exactly what I've been doing wrong. A lot of the times when people sit down on my videos and they watch it, they get to call me and say, wow. There's a lot that I've been doing wrong and I'm just going to start doing it right. So these are the things you're going to learn in this video. You think water, you think temperature, and you think humidity. <laughs> in the course of, I think last week or so, somebody called me and was actually testifying, talking about these things that I, I'm going to tell you now. All right, so there's a lot for us today. So let's give some attention to water, temperature, and then humidity, but well, there's more, there's more to that. So I'm going to take you further. You know, when you bring in your day old chicks, most of the time people just know they have to buy a very good feed and they just have to start giving it to the birds. Yeah, of course you give them water, you give them vaccines, you give them antibiotics, you give them multivitamins. Those are just the routines that people are familiar with, but that is not where the result is. I'm going to show you where the result of that massive weight is. Because actually, there are experiments that we have done and we have put birds under the same feed, under the same vaccination schedule, but we just alternate these things. We just made some alterations on these things I'm going to be sharing with you now. And it made the difference. It made the magic. Okay, so let's just go ahead. You get your day old chicks and, you know, bring them to the farm, start to give them feed. There are some things you need to focus on. And actually, there are three three things that can happen. If you bring your dill chicks to your farm and you start to nurture them, you start to nurse them, you start, start to raise them, regardless of the terminology you decide to use, guess you, there are some three things that would definitely happen. These three things would happen. These three things are bound to happen. And it, it, it's those three things that determine whether you are going to succeed or you're going to fail or you're just going to be mm, average on the average maybe just you're just okay everything just seems to be mm, manageable but you're not just getting that outstanding result that you see on facebook and you say come on these people are lying i'm going to show it to you today that they are not telling any lies everything is actually true and those results are achievable of course the first thing i'm going to talk about out of those three things is that the chicks are dying and this is what gets most people woke <laughs> let me use that term woke that's what awakens their spirit they're like wow my invested my investment is going and they start searching up and down the internet checking youtube and maybe they get to discover diy agree and they put a call through and by god's grace if i'm able to pick and answer them they are like wow thank you so much for helping the chicks are dying that's one of the three things that can happen if the chicks are dying, there are things that can account for it. Whether the temperature is just too high, some people don't know that the temperature can be too high. They just know the charcoal pot with charcoal or turn the gas on. <clears throat> Not many people even use gas. So they just load the charcoal pot and <clears throat> somebody still called me, I think yesterday or two days ago, the person got the old chicks. Is it chicks or turkeys now? And called me that she's going to get another one because they all died. Why? They choked them with charcoal. Come on. Let's start learning this thing. So if the chicks are dying, it could be that the temperature is too high. It could be that the temperature is too low. If it is too low, then they'll 
they may get pneumonia from there. Don't forget what I talked about in the last uh, session. They may get pneumonia due to low temperature. The temperature is just too cold. The humidity too can be too high. And if that happens, then you are going to be breeding diseases like coccidiosis before long. And even the birds will not be able to breathe. They will be having respiratory issues because at that high humidity, their air passage will not be free to actually help them respirate properly. All right. So the cheese can also be dehydrating, especially if there's no water and the temperature is also high. You know, they have drank water. The water has finished. You have gone out doing your daily activities and they are just weak. Or over the night, you put in sufficient amount of water and the temperature is just so high, 39 degrees and charcoal. You can't regulate it. That's why I advise people to actually get the gas brooder if you can, especially the dandy gas brooder that I'm marketing right now. It's just so good. It is automatic and it helps you to regulate the temperature by itself. Once you just set it, come on, go and sleep. All right, so the chicks can be dying because the litter is also wet. If the litter is wet, it will be wet on their body. It will lead to cold temperatures. It will lead to pneumonia and your beds can die. All right. So that's one thing that may make your eyes just pop open like, oh, come on, what's happening to my birds? Another thing that may be happening is, yeah, maybe your chicks are coping and you're like, wow, thanks to God, they are not really dying. They're not dying. Maybe just mortality of one, two today and tomorrow no mortality everything is just fine they are green they are fine but something is wrong that you don't know something is wrong but you don't know all right so when the chicks are coping what happens the chicks are eating but they are using lots of the feed to generate some heat yeah maybe in the place of insufficient heat maybe in your own case the the, the heat is uh the temperature is just sorry two, twenty-three, and it's slow for them, especially in the first two, three days. And you're like, yeah, the chicks are not dying, so you feel nothing is going wrong. But of course, my friend, the chicks are using some of your money, some of your hard-earned money that you have given to them as feed. They're using it to generate it so that they will be okay for you. Instead of converting the feed to meat, instead of directing all the energy, to convert the meat, uh, the feed to meat. They are using some of it, maybe 30%, you don't know, to generate it. And you feel everything is okay. And at the end of it, you say, ah, my chicks, they were fine. They didn't die, but they are just not performing like that of DIY. Come on, I'm going to let, in, uh, let you in on some other secrets. So the chicks are not eating and would gather together to generate warmth. Ah, oh. when the temperature is just so cold, the chicks, they're like, oh, you know, some of them, in some cases, they want to heat more to generate. In some cases, when it is extreme, they just go and hibernate in one corner and they're just resting. I know some of you have experienced this and you're like, what's wrong? What's happening? They just go and hide in one corner and they're like, <clears throat> they're sleeping. You see some mosquitoes going to perch on them. You know, they are just, I don't like that kind of setting. Come on. So it's possible that the temperature is too low and your cheeks are just huddling together in one corner. Before you know it, some of them may suffocate. Some of them ask because they have crowded together. Some of them that are weak because they have not eaten for long. Some of them may just die. They will suffocate and die. And you're like, ah, they just died. Nothing. They were not sick. Yes, cheeks that are not sick can also die. If they huddle together for too long, some of them will suffocate. It's not even me. It is they will suffocate, especially if the number is up to hundred. As long as you are raising up to 100 birds, if they huddle together for so long, some of them will suffocate. Even three weeks old chicks can still suffocate when they huddle together for so long. All right, so, and you know what? There are so much. Even if the chick is trying to struggle and get help from, you know, you guys are pressing me, wants to get up, but because the number is much, imagine a 40 something grams chick of day hold now second day maybe 50 grams cheek and like 20 are on it 50 grams times times 20 how can that small cheek be able to lift all of them so it may just suffocate and die there all right so when they are not eating much also because they are spending all the time trying to crowd together and generate it when they are not eating well their immunity will be dropping 
immunity will be low. Immunity, immunity will be low. And when the immunity is low, diseases will come in. They will come in because the immunity of the chick, especially the maternal antibodies that the chicks have gotten from the parents, are one of the defense mechanisms that they will use in the first few days of their life. And now you have made the immunity low. I mean, you believe that you have drugs. Come on. Your drugs will still work in conjunction with that immunity. So you need to give your birds feed and they should have good amount of warmth. Just that level of warmth that they need per time is what you should give them. All right, we'll still get there. Okay, so number four, the chick's performance potential, you are not maximizing it. You say you want this particular, you say you have watched my video on the Raw Studio 8, the Core 500, the Harbor Acre, and you have known so much about uh, the broiler breeds that are available, you know their potential. But then you suddenly order for Raw Studio 8, and you're not getting the result on your own farm. And you're like, wow, what's happening? The chicks have the potential, but you are not maximizing the potential. That's the problem. The chicks, they've got the potential. It is you who are not maximizing the potential. All right, so. You just need to feed them with the right amount of feed, but also give them the warmth that they need. That is what will help them to maximize their potential. All right, so some people also have poor water. The water is poor. Why is it poor? It is dirty. The shavings are getting inside the water drinker and you're not cleaning it by time. <clears throat> I tell you, if I'm raising birds and I'm still using that small drinkers, I clean it <laughs> minimum of five times a day. As long as I'm getting in there, I'm cleaning it. I'm cleaning it. Except you can get a drinker that they will not get to put the shavings inside. All right. So, and if you don't have consistent supply of water, if you don't provide your chicks with water all the time through the first few days, in fact, as a matter of fact, when you are raising brothers, is throughout their entire life, they should have water available all the time, all the time. All right, so thank you all for joining. I can see you, I can see you, I can see your comments. So they must have access to clean, fresh water all the time. It must be consistent. So we've talked about two things now that can happen when you are raising your birds and you want maximum weight. But then three things can happen. We have talked about two. The first one is they are dying and you are scared and you are running up and down. I've told you the reasons why they may be dying and um, yeah, I think I would like to just go back to high temperature, too low temperature, humidity is too high, chicks are dehydrated or dehydrating, and the litter is too wet. There are some other things, but these are very key. And this is the te- second uh, thing that can happen. The chicks may be coping. And where, 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 where you think things are going fine is actually not going fine. You are playing down on your profit. All right. So what's the third thing that can happen? And that's what every one of us wants. And this is it. The third thing that can happen is that the chicks are comfortable. As simple as that word is, it means a lot. It means a lot. As simple as it is, it means a lot. It means everything, actually. As long as you can make your chicks comfortable, come on. They are going to give you all the results you can get. Then you cannot start running after the best feed. If you cannot provide them with comfort, forget the feed. Just give them any feed. All right, so let's talk about the things that can give them comfort. If the chicks are in their comfort zone, and I'm going to explain this to you. I said it in one of my videos. Uh, I explained the comfort zone. Okay, so I want you to take, take it like this. When you are in a room and the place is hot, there's no automatic fan. I call even a standing fan, I call it automatic because you don't have to do anything. You just put it on. These days, you, you can even turn it on with your remote. Okay, so in a comfort zone, you don't have to do anything to feel okay. So you're, you're in a room that is hot. What do you do? Sometimes you can take your hand fan and you start to find yourself. You start to find yourself. You are supposed to be resting. You are supposed to be enjoying life. You're supposed to be enjoying, as a chick now, you're supposed to be enjoying the feed that you have given them. You're supposed to take the water. You're supposed to rest. You're supposed to convert the feed to meet but as you now in a room that is hot you spend your time fanning yourself 
you spend your time finding yourself your energy finding yourself your protein finding yourself the carbohydrate finding yourself the fat finding yourself all the lysine the methylene finding yourself trying to be okay come on stop that let them have their comfort zone yes in the comfort zone the cheeks does not have the cheeks do not have to do anything to feel okay they should just be fine you should be the one providing that comfort they should not try they should not be panting and raising their wings up like this and you're like oh these chicks are actually active see how they are panting come on they are already being stressed all right so they should be in their comfort zone where everything is just okay for them kai if you can do this as a farmer as a broiler farmer you've got everything perfect all right so the next thing is that the chicks yeah it's still joined to what i said earlier the chicks no the chicks yeah the chicks eat for growth and development they are not eating unlike the previous one where they are coping they are not eating to cope with the temperature they are not eating and maybe i forgot to talk about this in the other case where they are coping i talked about where they are eating more to compensate for the warmth that you are not providing for them in the case where the warmth is too much to where the eat is too much they will eat less they will not be able to eat as much as they should and that will also bounce back. That will also bounce back. So, is it that they are eating too much or eating less and they are not growing? All right. So, in this case, they are eating just for growth and development. Come on, tell me why you will not get that crazy conversion ratio. As long as your chicks are just eating for growth and development, they are not eating to manage the weather. They are eating just for growth. You, you are the one managing the weather for them. I talk about using thermometer and you know some people just feel it's not necessary come on i'm a pro in this thing if you can be able to maximize or manage the temperature effectively you know okay this is the right temperature they should have and you give it to them they don't have to manage the temperature by themselves they are just living in comfort and that's what gives you the maximum growth that you desire all right, so the third one is that the feed conversion is superb. Yeah, it's still in line. The feed conversion is superb. Since they're just eating for growth and development, they are just converting it, they are converting it to meat. So you are seeing almost everything in the meat. It's just the meat plus feces equals the feed that you have given them. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. The meat, the one they convert to meat, the residue that they pass out in the waste in their feces if you had them together they will give you what they have taken as feed but if they are also compensating for the warmth you are not giving that means you have to add warmth feed used for warmth feed used for growth feed that is passed out as waste so that gap is not necessary all right so when you are providing them with the comfort zone you are making your chicks comfortable they will be converting all your feed most of it to meat chicks also have strong immunity and can fight diseases better come on they don't have to waste some three days down where there is no appetite and you are calling there where i say ah, my chicks are not eating as they should i bought five bags and they are supposed to have eaten four bags now they have only eaten two bags and half if you don't treat them well if you don't give them the comfort zone that they require they will fall sick and you spend some of your money yeah you spend some of your money treating them and at the time they are supposed to be growing they will just be falling sick and wasting your time and resources all right so growth rate will also continue all right number five now chicks performance potential is maximized in the first few days i tell you nothing there's nothing you can do later in life to cover up for the mess you have made in the first say 10 days of the broiler life the first few days are very critical and if you mess up during that time there's nothing you can do later in life to cover up no way what you have lost in that first few days you have lost it forever so why do you want to lose something why do you want to lose during the time that you're supposed to provide them with warmth don't joke with that time the regular the normal warmth you should give them make sure you give them if it is too hot no heat get a thermometer get a gas brew that don't use charcoal and burn your cheeks i'm saying this 
don't use charcoal and burn your cheeks get a thermometer get a gas brooder all right or an electric brooder if you have stable or uh, constant electricity okay so the rate after you have been able to maximize that growth potential at that first in that first few days then the growth rate you notice that it continues to just increase it increases and at day seven they are at least times four of their weight in day one so why would you be happy as a farmer sometimes i even get up to times five of the weight they gave me on day one if i have 40 grams uh, of weight at day one sometimes i get up to 200 grams and even more at day seven so why wouldn't you be happy the first few days is the time you need to nurture them pamper them stay with them if you can spend i'm not going to say you should be a chick addict or what, what, what would i call it now i'm not going to say you should just stay there and spend the whole of the 24 hours you have in a day with them but as much as you can spend with them please spend with them you don't have to continuously trouble them enter the pen but you need to keep an eye on them that's what is important keep an eye keep an eye make sure you know what is happening in the chicks brooding house don't just go away and come back after six hours it's too long come on all right so have someone if you are going to go away for a long time have somebody check on them every two hours or so all right so the growth rate increases continuously by the time you do what you're supposed to do and the chicks mature before you know it yeah that's what happens when everything is going on fine you, you even realize that oh, come on i didn't even treat coccidiosis for up to two times this time that's because you are doing everything you should and if the chicks grow well in the first few days they grow up as strong birds birds with strong immunity but if you joke with their few days you just grow up weak in humanity and you see them coming down with disease all the time because you did not raise them well in the first few days i don't know how well i can emphasize on these first few days that chick stage that brooding stage i don't know how well i can emphasize on it but i cannot just say too much i can't say too much of it so that's what you get you know the three things is either they are dying and that's bad you know you need to get a solution and the worst is when they are coping and you think everything is fine when they are coping and you think everything is fine everything is not fine because you will not be getting the best result that you can get but what you need to do is to make sure that they have all the comfort that they can get make sure you give them the comfort that they deserve and once you do that forget about it the feed is going to work for you the feed is going to work for you all right so that's that about what you can do to make your broilers heavy in good time. Yeah, of course you can also or you can also have the growth promoters, preferably the uh, organic growth promoters. And if you go through my YouTube channel, you'll find several growth promoters. I talked about in a particular video. I talked about the four um, growth promoters that I use. I talked about the black pepper. I talked about the cloves, I talked about the bitter cola, and then the cayenne pepper. All right. And other group promoters, including um, including the egg emotion that I talked about. All right. So those are the things that you can also use. The feed is just, it's just number two. Yeah. I won't put it lower than number two, but it's not number one number one is the comfort that you can provide for your birds all right so i think i think that's where i would like to stop on the lesson for today and this will be the right time to entertain questions so let me know what you think if you think you even got what i've uh taught if you think you got it at all let me know what you think in the comment section and if you have questions please feel free to push them through and let's see how many of them we can answer all right so i'll be taking the questions now 
and please don't forget thank you for joining and it's important that you help like the video you need to like the stream make sure you click the like button if you are just joining us for the first time you need to uh click on the subscribe button you need to be part of this community this is a place that you can learn everything you need to know about poultry farming it's not just it's not just something you 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 hear and people just talk about things that are not real this is something that is real from real experiences you get to see what we are doing and you are also able to do the same okay so i'm expecting okay i'm seeing somebody complaining about losing their birds sorry about that all right this person is asking how they can get the gas brother in ibadan yeah we can ship it to you in ibadan yes just reach out to me on whatsapp i'm gonna put the number on the screen you can just copy that number All right, that's the number to copy. So I, I await your questions. You can send me a WhatsApp message on that number and um, the brother will be sent to you after payment. The particular one I'm selling from Damley, the one that has the thermostat is actually currently, is currently because the price is going to go up very soon, dollar price. The exchange rate is um, changing every day and we'll have to update the price very soon. But currently it's 118,000 Naira for a gas breeder that can cover up to 2,005 to 3,000 birds. And the interesting part is that even if you have 100 birds, it works. However, if you, all you are doing is just 100 birds, 150 or 200, you know, the economics of it, the fact that you have to go and buy a 118 gas brooder, 118 kg gas brooder may not be sensible to you, except maybe you are planning to expand. So there are also other ones you can get, but not with the um, thermostat. The thermostat makes the huge difference. Anyone who is doing up to, say, 500 birds, I would advise you to actually get that that, that gas brooder it's very good okay so um right somebody is asking how to stop brown poop yeah if you want to stop brown poop first you have to know the source or the cause of the uh, brown poop the cause of the brown poop is mostly um coccidiosis early stage of coccidiosis so you want to get your coccidiostat or anti drugs and just give it to your birds they should be fine after the administration all right so good good evening good evening thank you for joining us I don't quite understand this question. Is it possible to attain 100% immunization through the use of water? I don't quite understand what you mean by 100% immunization. I don't understand that, trust me. Because even if I want, if I try to understand you, even within a flock, the birds on an individual level will not have the same level of immunity their antibody title will be different from time to time and from bird to bird so i don't get it when you say 100 percent immunity okay Okay, this person is asking, what are some drugs, vitamins, and antibiotics you can recommend for a new broiler farmer seeking to raise good birds? Actually, 
apart from prevention, you are, you treat your birds based on the signs that you see. You also prevent based on endemicity sometimes. Endemicity is what are the diseases that are prevalent in a particular area. So it's not general. It's not general. However, it's important that you have, just like you have stated, you need antibiotics and you need multivitamins if you are doing it the regular way. But if you are practicing organic poultry like we do, and some of us who are watching this video, I know you have taken the organic poultry course. And uh, also anyone who is interested in taking the course can still uh, signify by sending me a WhatsApp message. <clears throat> All right. So you just need to get good antibiotics. There are some that are good for brooding. There are some that are good for treatment. Uh, it's not a one size fits all something. The antibiotics are so much. They are so much. I prefer to use enrofluxacin while brooding if I'm recommending it for a client or I'm doing it for experimental purpose and raising them uh, synthetically not organic <clears throat> for experimental purpose so i i choose aerofloxacin most of the time and multivitamins are just <clears throat> they're just plenty just get a good one just get a good one i'm not going to be promoting any brand for example aerofloxacin is just an active ingredient it's not a brand name so there are many brands that have aerofloxacin okay so Somebody is asking now, what's your current take on vaccination of the birds if I'm doing complete organic? Yeah, the word complete organic in itself, many of us are not practicing complete organic poultry. We're just raising birds naturally. Because if you want to practice organic poultry completely, your feet too must be organic. The maize must have been planted without the use of chemicals without the use of uh, pesticides no uh, chemical that's synthetic fertilizers and all that so if you can ascertain that those ones that the feed ingredients are organic then that's the beginning of you saying you are practicing 100 percent organic so in that case you should either vaccinate or not vaccinate even even in developed nations that practice organic poultry, there are some some of their rules that permit vaccination. Vaccination, even some of them even allow for antibiotics in the first day after arch. Yeah. So the use of vaccination or the use of vaccines is not ruled out completely in organic poultry you can actually vaccinate your birds you can however you can also do it without vaccinating them i have noilers i have some noilers and turkeys on the um, farm now they have never tested any vaccine not even fowlpox not even fowlpox not newcastle disease vaccine not gumboro they have never tested any vaccine they've just been on herbs and spices all right, so it's possible that you do it without vaccine and it's possible and it's allowed that you also vaccinate them. Yeah, it's possible that you raise them organically without vaccine and it's also allowed that you vaccinate. Vaccinating them does not make them poisonous. Yeah, it doesn't make them unwholesome. Okay, however, I always advise uh fresh starters in organic poultry to vaccinate their birds to vaccinate their birds especially if you're just starting poultry generally your biosecurity may not be so good so you it's important it's important that you vaccinate your birds okay <laughs> This question just got me laughing now. How I, I would like to know the most hungry birds and also broiler strains you've ever kept. <laughs> I don't know the most hungry birds. <laughs> as long as the birds are hitting. Broilers are generally <clears throat> hungry birds, yeah. 
they want to eat almost all the time what i know is that some birds will eat more and convert less and that is not good so we need birds that to eat and also convert if they are eating and converting then no problem but if they are eating and not, not converting well then there's a problem there's a problem okay so uh let's take more let's take more still have some time Uh, I don't I don't encourage this double dosing of vaccine. I don't encourage it. Especially at the chick stage, I don't encourage it. So you just give them the single dose. 50 birds, 50 dose. If you are using 100 dose vaccine for 50 birds, you need to divide after diluting. Or uh, what you can do is, for example, if the vial <clears throat> You have one vial of 100 dose vaccine and you want to vaccinate 50 birds what you can do is get um the water that has been mixed with milk to dechlorinize the water or dechlorinate the water you get maybe say 10 ml of the water then put it inside the vial make sure you dissolve the vaccine after dissolving it then pull out five ml for use i don't know if you are getting it pull out five meals for use or you pull everything out check what it's written on the syringe then you push out back because after dissolving the vaccine the water may be more than a little more than 10 meals so you pull out everything then you push out you pull out i don't know if you are seeing my hand yeah you pull out everything then you push back off of it. I don't know if I can put my hands on the syringe. I think I have. Yeah, here's the syringe. All right. So what you can do. What you can do is to pull out. See everything. Okay, I have a bottle of water here. So these things are very, very critical. And it's the reason why some people have vaccine failure. You know, they vaccinate their birds and after the vaccination is when the birds start to die. So let me make sure that this water does not drop on my computer. Okay, so let's say you have the two meals okay i believe you can see it now this is two meals come on focus yeah two meals you pull everything out then you push one meal back push half of it back into the vial let's say this is the vial you push one meal back into the vial and you're left with this one meal now yeah so this is what you now put inside the water that has been dechlorinated and you vaccinate your birds with that so don't use double dose don't use double dose of the vaccine all right okay i think this person wants birds that eat well and also convert as much as they eat yeah raw stereo it are actually good converters early converters uh at that they are early converters and they convert feed well they heat well and they convert well raw stereo it however you know apart from the breed of chicks there are also some challenges with arteries especially i can talk locally now there may be ch some challenges with arteries that will make a breed that is supposed to perform better than another if breed a on paper is supposed to perform better than breed b there are some challenges that may happen or persist in a particular artery that will make breed a which is supposed to perform better to now perform worse than breed b 
So it's not just about the breed. However, all things being equal, Rostereo should give you an excellent result as a fast shooter. Okay, but beyond six weeks, I would not choose Rostereo eight. If I'm going to raise the breast beyond six weeks, I won't go with Ross Stereo 8. I may probably go with the Cop 500. Okay. Uh... Oh, this person says, I got a good deal today and I want to go organic this time. What's the steps? Sir? Wow, this is not automatic. You have to be trained. You have to be trained. There are lots and lots of principles that you need to abide with and um it comes with training so if you're interested you can you can just reach out to me on whatsapp after the live session you can take the organic poultry course it's a 10 module course that will educate you and make sure that you know what you should do part time we have um treatment for all the diseases we have the abs common abs the right combination is what makes uh it work so once you have access to the right combination of these common herbs that are available around you then you'll be able to do the magic yourself okay so you also have access to my books the complete guide to uh, organic poultry farming yeah that book that is right there yeah the book is right there yeah that's it the complete guide to organic poultry farming and um the beginner's guide to successful broiler farming that also has lots of organic um teachings because i prepared it during a training okay so you get those books and you also get my master turkey manual it's a manual that teaches you how to raise turkeys because turkeys are different from broilers yeah all right so you just need to be trained that's all it's it's not a big deal Anyone can do it, but you need training. All right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can I preserve the dose I extract from the mixed diluents to use for next time? No, 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 no. I forgot to talk about how, what you do to the remnant. You have to either dig a pit and bury it there, or do I say burn it? If you can incinerate it in a way that you destroy the virus yeah you can <clears throat> but it's just put it in a place that you will not have access to it again ever again that's the best way so you don't use it again you don't, don't preserve it for another batch you, do, you, don't, you can't even save it for one day all right so is there any other question any other question before we wrap it up so you can actually make your brothers as big as you want as big as you want as big as you want right i'm gonna put that um what's wrong with my generator i'm gonna put that um slide up again just for us to see Right, so we can get our birds to be as big as we want, our broilers to be as big as we want. All you need to do is ensure that they are comfortable. One of three things can happen when you have your chicks. The first is that the chicks may be dying and you are, you are scared, you are disturbed, and you start to look for solution. And these are some of the things that may be causing the death and another thing which is very dangerous is when your chicks are coping they are okay to you everything seems fine they are not dying however they're not growing as incredibly as you want so you're just like well well they're not dying they are fine maybe that's how this breed is or maybe that's how this batch is going to be you're just believing but that's not what we want you to do okay so the third thing is the is the thing that you should all pursue which is the chicks are comfortable and when they are comfortable i tell you they are going to make you smile to the bank at the end of the day so there are things that you need to do 
to make sure that they are comfortable you make sure that you by yourself create the comfort zone don't allow them to do it don't let them do that job they should not do it. that's not their job their job is to just convert your feed to meat if you get that i tell you you've gotten everything you need to get their job is to convert the meat uh the feed to meat your own job is to provide the comfort that they need if you do your job well they will do their job well where they are not doing their, their job well it means you have not done your job well and that's just the difference between somebody who is getting the result that they want and someone who is not getting the results you have not done all that you should do that's the simple truth yeah there are a few cases where the birds that came from the hatchery they are bad they are poor birds or maybe the vendor just swindled you gave you a 200 naira worth of bread and collected 300 naira all those things happen but that just accounts for about maybe five percent of the time that people complain about broiler growth most of the time it is their fault it is their fault some get substandard feed to give their birds some of them you know they they don't feed at the right time they do all those things but more or most importantly they don't just manage the birds well in the first few days of their life they eat the things that i told you that you should take note of let's not forget where we started from you should think about the water you are giving them the temperature that they are exposed to and the humidity if you take care of these three things forget it you are going to get the best result that you want all right so that's it let me see if we have any new question here that's the number to call if you are interested in any of the courses or you want to get the gas brother the thermo the thermometer that i sell a smart one that you can connect to your phone instead of entering your chicken house all the time to go and peep at your thermometer you can just check it on your phone uh everything has been made easy nowadays you can just check it on your phone and see what the reading is you don't even have to enter the chicken house at all just go near the place and if you are lucky that you are raising your birds maybe they're in your backyard you can even check it from inside your house all right so that thermometer has uh has finished but the next stock is coming on the way already it should be it should be in store maybe in the next few days so you can also reach out for that oh All right you'll be able to watch the the replay you'll be able to watch the replay we have said all that we have said that and i even had a slide <clears throat> i had a slide that addressed all that part of the slide is what you're seeing on the screen right now so you'll be able to watch the replay and i tell you if you can go through the replay you are going to be blessed yeah your best will praise you for that okay so gas brooder for the farmer yeah there is uh, a gas brooder for two thousand bread for one thousand bread uh, that is about forty-seven thousand naira or so. So you can reach out. We we sell that too. You can reach out. We'll get it available to you. Okay. Yeah, the main gas builder that I talked about that can the that's the automatic gas builder that has thermostat that can regulate itself is one hundred and. 18,000 naira <clears throat> only for now for now for now i don't know when you'll be watching this video today is may 27 children's day yeah happy children's day in nigeria so for now it's just one one eight thousand naira and the price should be going up anytime soon because of the current exchange rate so we still have <clears throat> we still have a few left from the current stock you can get all right so what's the okay this person is talking about something very critical and important what's the recommended time to staff birds during vaccination 
they just may, may just make them go thirsty and uh two hours will do two hours will do it also depends on whether you give them feed or not some of us don't even bother to withdraw the feed as early as others but if you give them feed if they have access to feed they will go thirsty early enough because most of the time you do this vaccination in the morning and in the morning the weather is cool they may not really be thirsty within 30 minutes so anytime from one hour to two hours is good you will be sure that all of them are thirsty if you withdraw the water most importantly is the water you withdraw it for one hour to two hours once all of them are thirsty you will know and that's why it's important to know how to read your birds don't just go by a a a, a standard that may not 100 percent be effective on your own farm if the standard says uh two hours and your best start dying before two hours come on so it depends some of you may wait until 10 maybe you somebody goes to get the vaccine and did not return until 11 and your beds and you now start to stab them maybe around nine start them to 11 the temperature at that time is <coughs> excuse me the temperature at that time is hot it's hot so you can't stab them for two hours around that time so it's important that you are able to study your birds but generally between if you are Doing it in the morning, between one to two hours of uh, withdrawal is enough. I don't want to call it starvation. I call it withdrawal. Yeah. I did not mention a 45k <laughs> gas Buddha. I think I said 47, 47, 46 minimum. Most of those prices are even going up now because of current exchange rate and that gas reader does not have thermostats no no it doesn't no it doesn't all right so is there any other question we're going to be ending this live stream in the next two or three minutes and once again i want to thank you all for joining the live stream today it's been a wonderful edition uh the episode has really blessed us i believe and you all start to see the results if you start to implement these things that we have talked about also if you think that you have enjoyed the live stream please and please click the like button click the like button let's know that you are gaining from it and let youtube also be aware that you are gaining from this channel if you had to subscribe to the channel maybe you just joined us or you've been watching some videos but you're here to subscribe the best way to not miss out on any important tip is to subscribe and also click that notification bell so that you get notified anytime we put up new vi videos okay so <clears throat> i'm going to be taking this one before we end between lasota and gumburo which of the vaccines do you recommend a broiler farmer to start with and is it okay is it okay to start with any of the two actually you need to you need to work with vets in your area vets that know what they are doing because i mentioned earlier i said endemicity depends on what is endemic in your area it depends on the disease that is um that is often encountered in your zone in your region so sometimes people start with Gumboro, some start with Lasota. If Newcastle is so rampant, then you want to quickly address it. If it is Gumboro, then you want to quickly address it. So it's actually either of the two, depending on the endemicity data and record in your area. All right. So that's that. Uh, thank you, big, Mo big mommy. Thank you for joining us today um god bless you too amen all right is this where we hand it um thank you all for joining i see you i can see names that are really um i can see names that do come up almost every live session thank you joy thank you 
Juliet. Thank you, Igbo boy. Thank you, Umi Oyenri Day. Thank you, Sheon. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, please, I have noted the number of people that joined the live stream. I want to make sure, I want to see that the number of likes I'm getting also correlate. Please make sure that you all click the like button. That's one way to show me that you are enjoying the things that I'm doing. That's one way to appreciate me and uh, to encourage me to do more. All right, so thank you. And this might be where we'll end it now. This might be where we end it tonight. Okay, so in two minutes, we have talked about how to make your beds grow big, as big as you want. And I've said that it doesn't have to be feed all the time. It's not just about feed. It's not just about feed. Broiler growth is not just feed. So you need to give attention to water, temperature, and humidity. And when you get your birds on the farm, the normal thing is for you to get your feed and start feeding them, give them water, give them multivitamins, give them antibiotics if you are practicing synthetic. However, you also need to focus on the things that are happening. And three things can happen. Is it that they are dying? If they are dying, there are reasons why they may die. Is it that they are coping, which is the most dangerous? If they are coping, you may not you may think that everything is fine, that maybe you're just not getting good results because of something, maybe the they are attributing it to the cheap breed and all that. That's dangerous. You may be the one that is causing all that to happen. So what you want to do and what you want to get is the chicks should be comfortable. You need to create the comfort zone. Don't let the chicks walk to create the comfort zone by themselves by using the feed they are supposed to convert into meat to produce some warmth for themselves or by oddling around themselves. Instead of eating, they just go to the corner and they start oddling to generate warmth or you know, all those things. You need to provide a comfort zone, ensure that the feed you are giving them is being used for just growth and development, nothing else. And then the feed conversion will be superb if you provide the comfort zone that they need for them. They also have strong immunity and the chick's performance potential will be maximized in the first few days. That is what they are going to carry on. Their growth rate is just continuing to increase and then they mature before you know it. I know that's the testimony that we want to share, but we have our own role to play. While the chicks are busy trying to convert the feed to meat for you, you also should be busy trying to make sure that everything is okay with them, trying to make sure that the environment is conducive, trying to make sure that they have the right ventilation that they need, trying to make sure that they have the warmth that they need, trying to make sure that the humidity is right, trying to make sure that, you know, they're just okay. Yeah, that's it. All right, so once again, thank you all for joining. Thank you all, thank you all. I can't thank you enough. And we'll be meeting again, I think, is this not the, yeah, this is the last Friday. We'll be meeting again the second Friday of June. Next Friday is first Friday, and we are not going to have a live session on that Friday. So we'll be meeting again next two Fridays. All right. Thank you all for joining, and have a blessed evening or morning, depending on where you're watching us from. All right. So thank you, and bye-bye.